Welcome to the first video of this channel. Since this is the first video, I'd like to take a quick moment to explain the standard format that you should expect when you choose to click on an engineer's weekend video. I work as a multidiscipline design engineer, therefore the videos will be from that perspective. At the start of every project, we will first go over the requirements, objectives, and interfaces for the project. Afterwards, we will weigh the pros and cons of different concepts that may satisfy the defined needs. Once a concept is chosen, the video will move on to design and creation or purchase of the product. Finally, we will go through and determine if we did or did not meet each of our requirements, objectives, and interfaces, adding in a cross breakdown at the very end. I'll explain each step in a little more detail since this is the first video. One last note, I like working with 3D models, so the videos will likely be 3D model heavy, kind of like the intro to this channel. Let's think about what we want in a storage device for personal and YouTube video data. The requirements are going to be features or functionalities that the product, in this case a large storage device, must have or else this product would not be useful. As you can see in this table, I have a column for the requirement, the justification of the requirement, and a met column. The met column will be used at the end to confirm that the product that we have designed or purchased has met our requirements. So the first and foremost requirement is that we need large capacity storage. The projects that I will be working on consume large amounts of data. I currently record in 4K 60 with 10-bit color using my OnePlus 11, but one day I'll move to dedicated cameras that will choose far larger data rate videos. Secondly, there needs to be some redundancy. If a hard drive fails and I lose that data, it could ruin progress on multiple videos and make the time that I use to gather that data completely pointless. Finally, there needs to be an option to sync with cloud provider like Google Drive or OneDrive. This will help make data transfer between my phones and computers easier, as well as provide an option to back up important files. The things that I would like to see in a storage solution is a high-speed connection, like 10 gigabit network connection or better. I would like to reuse hardware that I already have and minimize the cost. I don't like to throw away electronics if they're still usable, so I prefer to reuse them or sell them to someone who will use them. The storage device will have to interface with several different things, the most obvious being that it'll have to connect with my workstation computer. Subscribe to see my workstation build video tailored to the workflow I have for this channel. Data from my phones and future cameras will need to be transferred to the storage device, and there will have to be network connectivity to connect to the cloud data services. Now let's look at the options there are for a mass storage device and the pros and cons associated with each one. Try not to bias towards a predisposed solution. I think most people would argue that external USB hard drives are easy to use, as all you have to do is plug it into a USB port. These external drives are also very commonly found on sale, making them potentially an inexpensive option. However, these devices also generally come with lower quality NAND that have very low lifespans. I've worked with external hard drives that have stopped working in just a couple of years at my previous job. To me, a con is that the data is not always readily available. Every time that I would need to find some data, I would have to locate the correct drive and plug it into the computer. This takes time and is inconvenient. There's also no redundancy in using an external drive, although there are enclosures that do include built-in redundancy with multiple drives for an extra cost. Uh, external storage devices also take up more space due to the enclosures that each individual one would come in. Even more, the data would be excessively inconvenient to back up, with likely a whole other solution required to do so. Lastly, these hard drives would be limited to USB speeds, with a Thunderbolt port adding a considerable premium to the cost of a potential drive. Storing data solely in the cloud has some pretty good pros, like very low chance of data loss, it's easy to connect to multiple devices, there are often additional features included with cloud storage, and the data is easily shareable with others when necessary. A big con for me is that cloud storage is going to be tied to internet bandwidth, I do have fiber at home, but it's only rated to about 940 megabits per second, which is a lot compared to the national average, but it's not a lot when dealing with potentially terabytes of data. Plus, I'm not guaranteed to get the full speed 100% of the time. Another con is that I found that cloud storage options tend to have relatively small storage capacities, such as Google Drive with a max of 2 terabytes. The biggest con is the annual cost. 2 terabytes of storage would cost me up to $100 per year for as long as I wanted to keep the data. 
I find that a NAS has more pros than cons. I like that a NAS would really only be limited to the speed of the local network, and 10 gig networking really isn't that expensive these days. There is drive failover baked into true NAS, so multiple drives can fail with no data loss. There's no annual fee, it is highly scalable and upgradable, so I can just add another drive pool in the future or upgrade anything else as my needs scale over time. Finally, there is also a higher level of security than other options. Not only is the data pool encrypted, someone would need to have physical access to my network in order to steal or hold the data ransom. I could only come up with two downsides, one of those being the higher upfront costs when compared to other concepts in the list, as well as needing some technical knowledge to set up the NAS. I've heard from popular YouTubers that uploading videos to YouTube just for storage is actually not uncommon for individuals to do with their personal videos. There are some pros to this option such as there's no extra cost, no max capacity, and the videos would be easily shareable. However, like the cloud storage option, this is going to be limited to the available bandwidth of the internet connection. Also, since I intend on being a YouTube creator, this would make my YouTube channel an organizational mess with the potential of accidentally making snippets of raw video public when not intended. Finally, this would result in multiple levels of compression since YouTube automatically compresses every video that is uploaded to the site. These levels of compression would result in videos that are far less visually appealing. With all these pros and cons in consideration, I've chosen to build a NAS along with purchasing some cloud storage. This may seem like an obvious solution to those who watch many tech tubers, but this was a good exercise to help keep an open mind and potentially help serve new solutions that could end up being a better solution. Now let's get on with the build. I did have to update the BIOS on my ASRock B450 motherboard before installing the new CPU, but that was fairly easy to do. For this build, I will be using components that I already had from previous NAS and gaming builds. I did buy one new component that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Ryzen 5700G. Not only will I no longer have to worry about needing to temporarily install a GPU into the NAS for installing and debugging, but the 2600X that I had is really starting to show its age in performance. You can see the final build as I installed TrueNAS. I decided to keep the RGB components of the build plugged in for that extra 1 megabit per second of transfer speed. We'll go through the full specs in the cost breakdown portion of this video. As you can see, I got TrueNAS up and running with the 5700G operating at more than acceptable temps, 16 gigs of RAM, and almost 7 terabytes of usable storage space with a 512 gigabyte cache drive. I also have Google Drive synced up for copy. Let's get to the cost breakdown. I was able to use the hardware, like I said before, that I had already purchased in the past, except for the CPU upgrade to the 5700G, which cost $169.32. Although I'll run through about how much it would cost for someone to build something similar. To hit the highlights, we have the Ryzen 5700G, again, at $169.32. Now this is a bit overkill for how I am using the NAS, someone could go with something like the Ryzen 5600 instead. However, the CPU I chose would more likely handle a possible 25 gig upgrade path in the future with the additional cores and PCIe lanes. Next is the CPU cooler. I just used the stock cooler that came with the 5800X that I had in the past. 
This is the highest end cooler that AMD had included with their CPUs and is more than enough for the 5700G, but someone could easily get an equivalent cooler for $65 or less. As for the hard drives, buying 2TB hard disk drives today is not the best bang for buck. I now would go with 4TB NAS drives from Seagate that are only about $80 a piece. $15 for double the capacity is just a no-brainer. In the end, the total comes to about $1,114, but this could be com definitely done less expensively with sales and patience, or even purchasing used components. Now let's look at the requirements, objectives, and interfaces that we created at the beginning of the video. Large capacity storage, met. Redundancy, met. Backup cloud storage, met. High speed, we got 10 gig, met. Reused own hardware, met. Minimized cost, definitely met. There could be an argument that I could have gone with a lower end CPU, but the fact that I reused all the other hardware makes me feel like we can check this one off in my case. As for the interfaces, we can now interface with all of the items of the list. Workstation computer, cameras and phones, network, and cloud service being Google Drive. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Expect a variety of videos to be created on this channel and to reflect on what this end engineer has done over the weekend. Videos can include projects, tech-related topics, product reviews, and possibly more.